Hi, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and today we're going to simplify the following little uh, expression here that involves fractional exponents. You, you begin to learn about these fractional exponents in algebra, and uh, so they look a little bit ugly. What we're going to do is figure out a logical way to attack this. The number one thing, the number one thing that you must understand in order to do any problem involving these fractional exponents is uh, the following. Remember back from algebra, you did learn something of the, of the following uh, nature. Say that you had x uh, squared, that's a term, and you take the entire thing, let's say, and you raise it to the third power. So you have a power raised to another power. That is equal to x, and the new power is going to be 2 times 3. So in other words, it's going to be x to the sixth power to the sixth power. So when you have a power, some kind of exponent, raised to another exponent, you multiply the exponents. So that's very, very important. And you'll see why here in just a second. Because look at both of our little, uh, our, our little terms here. They involve fractions. So what you have here is one way to write this and the way to really start to break it apart and tackle it is what, let's go ahead and rewrite this as the following. The two to the five halves we're going to rewrite as two to the one-half power, and then we'll raise the whole thing to the power of five. Now, I want you to stare at this and make absolutely sure that you agree that this thing is equal to what I have here, because it is. One-half times five is five-halves. If you just take the fraction one-half and multiply by five, you're going to get what we have here. So what I've written here is equal to this. Now let's subtract off this other term. So this term is going to be two to the one half, and that entire thing we're going to raise to the power of 3. And that makes sense because if we take 1 half and multiply by 3, we're going to get our 3 halves. So you might think, why is he doing this? This looks even uglier than the original expression. But notice what we've done. We've broken it up so that everything inside the parentheses here, this 2 to the 1 half power, is exactly the same as this 2 to the 1 half power over here. They're the same thing inside the parentheses. So let me ask you a sort of a side question. If I gave you something like x to the fifth minus x to the third, something really simple from Algebra 1, and I said factor that, what is, what is the common factor? What can you pull out of this? Then you should answer that you can pull x cubed out because it's common to both terms. So you'd be able to pull out x cubed, and you'd open a parentheses, and then it'd be x squared over here minus 1. Make sure that you remember this from Algebra 1. So because x cubed is here, and this is x to the fifth, the common thing between both of these guys is x cubed. So if I go backwards, this times this is going to give us x to the fifth, adding the exponents. And this times this is just going to give me x to the third. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is, what I've done is drawn a sort of an analogy here. This is x to the fifth and x to the third, and I'm showing you how you factor it because that's something you're familiar with. Now look at what we have up here. We have some term here. It's, it's ugly. It's two to the one-half power, but it's something in here raised to the fifth minus the same thing raised to the third. So even though it looks a little bit uglier, the common base here, the common thing inside the parentheses is exactly mirrors what we have down here. So we are going to be able to factor this expression um, just like we factored the one below. And the common thing to both of them is going to be 2 to the 1 half, all raised to the power of 3. That's common to both of these guys. And then on the inside, we're going to have um, 2 to the 1 half raised to the power of 2 uh, minus 1. And what I'm going to do here, just to make things a little bit clearer, I'm going to erase the cube, and I'm going to erase the 2 here, and I'm going to change colors just to make it clear. So what we have here, this is the power of 3 on the outside, and this is the power of 2 in here. So just to sort of make it a little bit easier to see. So make sure that you understand that this is coming from this. This term times this, we just add the exponents, we get the fifth power here. This guy times this is just going to give us this guy over here. Now you might say, why did he do that? Well, the reason is... Uh, because look at what we have here. Now we have a situation on the inside that's very simple. What is this term right here? Don't forget we have this guy multiplied, or I say, should say raised to the power of 2. So if I go back and, and change this back, this is going to be 2 to the power of 2 over 2. In other words, it's going to be 2 to the power of 1. 
So what we're going to have here is 2 to the power of 1 right here, this term right here. Because when we have an exponent raised to another exponent, we multiply them. So we're going to get 2 to the power of 1. So inside these brackets, I guess long story short, we're going to get 2 minus 1 inside these brackets. Now outside the brackets, we still have this. We still have 2 to the 1 half. And for now, let's leave it like this, raised to the third power. So continuing on down, 2 minus 1 is 1. So this entire thing is equal to 2 to the power of 1 half raised to the power of 3. But now that we've gotten to the answer, we can just multiply these together again. So it would be 2 to the 3 halves power. And that is the answer, 2 to the 3 halves power. So I want to go back over it again and make sure you really understand it because there's quite a few steps here and you may not know that this is the right way to go ahead of time. And the truth is it takes practice and you might try a few different paths. And the truth is there's probably a different path to do this problem. There's always a different way to do math problems. But you know, this made a little bit of sense to me because my first thought was, all right, I've got these ugly fractional exponents. I have to separate them out. I notice that both of them have a 2 in the bottom, so I'm going to write the 1 half power inside. I'm going to raise this to the 5th and this to the 3rd uh, there. And then as soon as I saw that, I realized that the base of both of these powers, that this guy right here, this whole thing, was common to both. So I could just pull them out. And I could pull... 2 to the 1 half cubed out because that's the common term to both. So I pulled it out and then what I had on the inside was uh, this term over here uh, minus 1 and then basically when I go back and, and convert down to the final answer when I multiply 2 times this exponent I get uh, 2 to the 1 power essentially. So I have 2 minus 1 inside of these brackets which reduces to 1. And so the thing that I was left with on the outside, the thing that I pulled out, ends up becoming the final answer when you when you distribute it back in. So sort of the, the trick here, if you want to call it a trick, is that you really need to break up the fractions of the exponents in order to see what you can factor out. And then once you factor it out, the inside of this guy just reduces down to nothing. It goes to 1. And then what you're left with on the outside, right over here, is uh, the final answer. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've learned something from this section. Fractional exponents... Uh, are always going to involve a power or they can always be written as a power raised to another power. So when you do that, a lot of times you can see things that you can factor out in order to simplify the expression.